Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to yet another beer review. With me, Peter the Master of Puppets, I get joined by Jakob the Lord of the Molds. And today, we're going to be looking at some more beer that was sent to us by Ryan, aka Stumpy Joe Jr., and Phil, uh, one of Ryan's friends and a guy I also met. Uh, my friend, I guess, too. I met in uh, San Diego, and thanks for the tour of Stoneville. Uh, probably. Um, <laughs> Ryan sent this one, which is the 2012 Churchill's Finest Hour, and Phil sent the 2011 version. So, we're going to be doing a little vertical here. Uh, of the Churchill Finest Hour beers, and if you haven't heard of Churchill's Finest Hour, I'm sure some of you guys have. It's a rare beer made by Lost Land. It was also a speech. Yeah, of course, I know. <laughs> I think they know Churchill. But it was, it's a rare beer. They do it every year uh, from Lost Abbey Slice Port Brewing. Uh, 2011, as far as I remember, is a blend of bourbon barrel age or older viscosity, which is bourbon barrel age old viscosity, and bourbon barrel age, uh, rye whiskey barrel age serpent stout. Well, this one is the same kind of blend, but instead of rye whiskey barrels for the Serpent Stout, it's just regular bourbon barrels, and the recipe changes every year. Uh, both of these are 11%, so pretty big beers. I've had the 2012 in San Diego. Oh, sorry. I think it's a cat. Yeah. Uh, I had the, the 2012 in San Diego at Churchill's, and it was great. It's like you, you go to this event where they release it, you can buy two bottles to take home, and all the other bottles are sold at Churchill's. And so you can actually go there and buy a bottle, which is what me and Ryan did. But Jakob's never had it. Have you had any other components? You've had we reviewed Serpent Stout together. Yeah, that's right. Which is really a really overrated or overrated <laughs> underrated or a really <laughs> underrated Imperial Stout. Um, and it's a long time since I had older viscosity. It was when they were in those uh, tall. Uh, 375 uh, centiliter bottles. I'm That's a big fan of Churchill's bottles. boo. Yeah. He was an awesome guy. So yeah. So the finest hour is a speech he made, or some something finest hour was a speech he made at, in front of the House of Commons in England under the Second World War. Go search for it. <laughs> Learn some. It's, it's on YouTube. I'm <laughs> sure. So yeah, we're gonna crack this open and check them out. So we got both of the Churchill's board. Pitch Black beers, it's the same color. Pitch Black, nice, beige, tan head. Yeah, I actually gotta think the uh, 12. Yeah, the, the 12 is a big glass. Lighter. Yeah, well, maybe a little. Uh, I think I, it, it's a little more off white. At least the head, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah the white. Uh, the yeah. head. <laughs> uh, but And the small glass is the 2011. Um, but yeah, I don't think I mentioned that, but the older viscosity is an Imperial Porter, while Serpent Stout is an Imperial Stout. But let's start off. With the 2011 version, which is the rye whiskey barreled serpent stout blend. Wow, wow, that's the most amazing. <laughs> wow. One, one thing that kind of pops into my head is kind of like oats. Yeah, oats, oats. Almost like a oatmeal like. Yeah. yeah. A lot of roasted malt, a lot of, And you can kind of see an almost spicy thing going on. Yeah. But it was just like oats. Mm. Fresh kind of uh, oats. Just but oats. a lot of bourbon mm. and, or whiskey notes. A lot of it. A lot of licorice and. Dark, sticky, toffee kind of thing. Uh, and and maybe almost a salty note as well. A lot of dark chocolate, but also some of the sweeter chocolate and almost like fudgy notes. Oh, fudge, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot of that. Some dark fruits, like and maybe a, it has that kind of dark cherry soaked in bourbon kind of thing going on. It, it, it doesn't have too much of a rye whiskey character. It's no. more of a light kind of spicy note, maybe. Sorry, cheers. Holy crap, that's amazing. Wow. Wow, it's got a lot of coffee. A lot of coffee. Uh, yeah, you got really <laughs> satisfied by that. Uh, the oats isn't as dominant as the first thought in the aroma, but it's there. You kind of get this mm -hmm. kind of like chewy yeah. oatiness. It's definitely a full mouthfeel, nice yeah. and sticky and nice and creamy. Um, I don't think it has too much of that spicy character. It's more of just a bourbon flavor with a lot of vanilla and kind of toffee like not but I I think as you said nuttiness in the flavor aroma yeah. I get a lot of nuttiness in the flavor actually like almost a toasted nut yeah not a spe specific nutty flavor but just like generic, generic toasted yeah. nuttiness um, along with like this kind of char charred oak uh, woody burnt kind of notes and also a lot of coffee it's like I think it's chocolate dark chocolate and coffee that are yeah. the dominant flavors and the coffee kind of plays well with the beer mm -hmm. And no trace of alcohol at all. No, uh, not at all. Eleven percent. Don't taste no it heat, no taste. And really nice mouthfeel on it. But and you also talked about the salty thing. 
it almost has that kind of soy sauce actually. Uh, not in a bad way, but it kind of does have it. Uh, dark fruit though is not as prominent on the flavor, it's more on the aroma. It does have a kind of a dark fruit character, yeah, but I think but it's more the roasty, toasty flavors. You get yeah, like a dark I, caramel and darker chocolate. I get kind of like a black currant or something mm. going, but it's very subtle and more like a vine gum kind of black currant mm. than the fruit. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe it's just me. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll save a little on this and then we'll get back to you with the 2012 version in a sec. So we're back with the 2012 Church's Finest Hour, and uh, yeah, let's see about the aroma on it. Wow, mm. wow, yeah, it's different, definitely. Yeah. This has more soy sauce-like character. Yeah. For sure. And a little more smoke. Yeah, it almost has a smoky tone. That's definitely true. Wow. Just one second. Wow. That quite, and this has heat. This has heat compared to the other one, too. And it has more raisin. I get a lot of raisin. Again, you know, the bourbon soup raisin kind of thing. I get a lot of that on this one compared to this one. And this one also, the, the 12, has more nutty notes. Almost like the almond character. Yeah, we yeah about. it kind of stings, as you said, would be uh, yeah, alcohol. alcohol. It definitely has some heat to it. Um, but all, other than that, it's a lot of the chocolate, a lot of bourbony, whiskey-like notes, uh, vanilla, but soy, that, uh, kind of. Yeah, but that's soy sauce, but really nice, really complex. A lot of the bourbon, dark fruits, all that stuff. Dark caramel. Want to give it a taste? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. A little bit Cheers. of tobacco, too. Hmm. That's interesting, because that's also fairly balanced in the flavor. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's... Uh, wow. It is really nice. Mouthfeel on this one is kind of the same. It's yeah. full. It's viscous. Um, it's Yeah, it has a sticky gloss. It doesn't have that. Uh, I picked up a kind of black currant something in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, this one doesn't have it, or it does. It, it isn't as. Yeah. Uh, this one seems more balanced. This one seems a little more aggressive. Yeah. The, and it has more of the roasty, toasty, the char kind yeah, of flavors. Still a lot of vanilla and a lot of bourbon. Yeah. Uh, I mean, bourbon definitely is the flavor that shines through in both of them. I mean, you could. I think, I'm not even sure if I would pick up the rye, kind of spicy rye in this one, if I didn't know if it, w it was rye barrels that it was aged on, yeah. but, you know, it's like that a lot. So the 2011 vintage, amazing, I mean, it's it's a really nice blend of beers. Rating wise for me, I'm going to go uh, 98 on this, it's, it's great, with a year of age on it, it's phenomenal stuff, <laughs> it is really good, it's so balanced, so, so drinkable. It's one of those nice, mind-blowing uh, Imperial stuff. It is fantastic. It's not like Forrest and Walker mind-blowing, but... <sighs> I'm gonna have to go 14th in a couple of days, sorry. Yeah, we are, but uh, it's, it's still amazing stuff. I mean, this is phenomenal. So yeah, 98 for the 11. Yeah. Uh, I really love this one. This is a great beer. This is so balanced and so rounded and so... And I really like the coffee and chocolate flavors yeah. in this one. So, uh, I would almost say rustic, but... Yeah, well, it's just babbling. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go 98 as well. And uh, for the 2012, I'm gonna go 97. I really like this one a little bit better, a little tad bit. Yeah. I was, I was verging on giving this a 96, but I really do think that in a year or two, this might. In a year, this is gonna be amazing. Yeah, this is gonna be. Just uh, well, they are food. already yeah. freaking amazing, but <laughs> don't with a year of age, it will be. Yeah, in a year. even more amazing. But uh, yeah, for me, I'm gonna give this one a 95. It's again another amazing uh, brew. I mean, 95 is a fantastic way <laughs> yeah. to give a beer. So, uh, amazing barley stuff from uh, from Lost Abbey slash Port Brewing. Definitely check in, check this out. Yeah, great stuff. Definitely know, let us know what you think of this if you've had it. As always, guys, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter, and we're going to say cheers. I'm not going to... No, I'm not going to either. <laughs> we're going to see you guys in another beer review.